the youngest of four boys, born to a wonderful set of parents, and Kenneth and Jermaine Lyons. They were uh, good Christian folks, hardworking. My dad was a mailman, and my mom was a registered nurse. And my three brothers were all excellent athletes and excellent students, so I had role models in, within my own home. And I used to tag along with my older brothers and my dad to the ball fields, whether it be football, baseball, uh, you name the sport, uh, my brothers and I all played them all. So as a young man, as a young boy that is, uh, I had a dream to be a Major League Baseball player. As a matter of fact, in sixth grade, I wrote a, a story on uh, things that I had done over the summer and during the first part of the school year. And, talked about my exploits in Pee Wee football and Little League baseball, but the last line of that particular paper that I wrote said my ambition is to be a Major League Baseball player. So that is something my mom kept for many, many years in the inside sleeve of her Bible. And uh, thankfully I've been able to save that and uh, to this day I still have that. But my brothers were very talented and were very much uh, in the spotlight throughout their early days and their careers. And I aspired to be like them. And uh, through uh, the grace of God and the talents that he bestowed upon me and that he gave me, uh, I was able to follow in their footsteps. And uh, they were certainly uh, excellent role models. And, uh, best friends. As a high school athlete, I played football and baseball, went to a, a, a predominantly boys school or an all boys school, uh, Notre Dame High School in Biloxi, and played football and baseball. I chose to transfer to Biloxi High School as a junior, a decision that I relied on my gut feeling uh, and looking back now, I know it was God's plan and uh, it wasn't my gut, it was Him telling me through my gut, I guess you might say. But I chose to uh, transfer to Biloxi High School, had to sit out uh, as a junior. I practiced football every day and baseball every day, but was not allowed to play in the games because I transferred within the city limits. As a senior, I was uh, an outstanding football player, had scholarship offers and accepted a scholarship to Delta State University and then after for football. And after my baseball season as a senior, Coach Dave Boo Ferris, uh, a wonderful man, a gentleman, and an inspiration to me in my life and my baseball career, offered me just a full baseball scholarship to attend Delta State, which I accepted uh, in a hurry. But as a high school player, as a high school athlete, as a high school student, uh, I did begin to uh, enjoy the weekends and began uh, drinking beer during that time. Uh, a lot of my friends and I would uh, enjoy the weekends and, and, and have parties at diff different ones' houses. and. Uh, but uh, it was uh, a fun time, a great experience, and uh, high school was a, was a, a joy, and uh, my athletic uh, endeavors certainly were first and foremost, and, and uh, I was very proud of the accomplishments I was able to achieve during that time. At Delta State University, I had the pleasure of playing four years for Dave Boo Ferris, a great coach and a great person. During that time, uh, as a freshman, uh, from the day I walked on campus to the day I left, I was the starting catcher. And we had uh, tremendous success as a team, won conference championships, uh, actually won the regional championship and went to the Division II College World Series as a senior, of which I was named Mississippi College Baseball Player of the Year as well as Division II All-American and received numerous other awards during my college days. After my junior year, I was drafted by the Detroit Tigers in the 25th round. I had missed a month during that season with a broken hand and during all of my partying and beer drinking, uh, 
uh, I put on a good bit of weight and I was not uh, in the shape that I needed to be. Uh, I did not have the season that I wanted to have and I chose not to accept or to sign that professional contract and I decided to go back for a couple of reasons. One was to complete my degree in business administration. Secondly was to have a senior season that I would be proud of and would would cherish for the rest of my life. And thirdly was to uh, make certain that I went out on a very positive note and do something special for Delta State University, for Coach Boo Ferris, and for myself. And Coach Ferris and I had a long talk this summer before my senior year, and he shared with me uh, what was possible for me if I dedicated myself to training, to focusing on uh, baseball, to being the best that I could be. And uh, my senior season was uh, phenomenal in all aspects. And I was drafted 10 rounds higher by the New York Mets and chose to sign a professional contract, albeit not a lot of money in those days. But uh, as uh, the gentleman on the other end of the phone uh, said, representing the New York Mets, son, do you want to play pro baseball? Said, yes, sir. I'll sign today and I'll be in my car headed to wherever you tell me tomorrow. And uh, thus began my major league journey, uh, which certainly is uh, something I'm very proud of. After my senior season uh, in June of 1982, I was drafted by the New York Mets, as I mentioned earlier, and signed the contract at a Burger King in Montgomery, Alabama. My agent was from that area and on my way to Shelby, North Carolina, which is my first assignment, was playing for the Shelby Mets. Uh, I drove into town and was looking for a minor league ballpark and uh, didn't see one and pulled into a convenience store and asked uh, the girl working behind the counter where the minor league ballpark was. She had no idea what I was talking about, but pointed in a, a direction and said, there's uh, a high school field over there with uh, lights on at night. That might be it. So I drove up and uh, it was far from uh, the accommodations and the, uh, the facilities that we had at Delta State University. It was quite a step down going to a high school field. Uh, today it's a lot different, but that was one memory that stuck out was uh, that uh, going to the minor leagues uh, was not uh, a walk in the park, so to speak. Uh, it was a, a jungle out there, if you will, and a journey that uh, started out in a place that I was a little surprised and a little taken aback at uh, what I was really getting myself into. But it proved to be uh, a very successful first season. I went on from there and uh, climbed the ladder in the New York Mets organization and played with a lot of great ball players in the minor leagues and obviously in my major league days played with a lot of people, uh, names of which many people know of, Daryl Strawberry, Dwight Gooden, Gary Carter, Keith Hernandez, David Cohn, Ron Darling, Sid Fernandez, Bob Ojeda, Lenny Dykstra. Uh, the list goes on and on. A lot of great ball players, uh, a lot of guys that had tremendous careers, and also uh, a lot of guys that had personal uh, tragedies and personal difficulties and, uh, and uh, things that uh, happened in their lives, and certainly I can relate to them, was a part of some of those and witnessed some of them and shared some of them the times and uh, certainly uh, uh, we've all grown from that and some are still uh, finding themselves in difficult situations and others have uh, made their way and found the Lord and certainly uh, that is the case with me. 1986 I made the New York Mets as a rookie coming out of spring training a team that had lots of high expectations, uh, an all-star lineup of players, both position players and pitchers. And unfortunately, I was stuck behind a guy who eventually would become a Hall of Famer, and that, that is Gary Carter, a great catcher, 
a great ball player, and a Christian man. Gary actually was a roadblock for me in my career because he was, uh, as I just said, a Hall of Fame player, but he was signed to a very lucrative long-term contract. And therefore, uh, an up-and-coming player like myself, I spent the majority of my Major League days backing him up. Uh, or caddying for him, which is uh, another term that is used in baseball. But I had uh, four great years in New York, nonetheless. Uh, I didn't get to play nearly as often as I would have liked to have. Uh, but the experiences and the time that I spent in New York and in the major leagues, uh, I wouldn't trade for anything in the world. I was able to live out a childhood dream and for that, I am very thankful to God for allowing that and giving me the talents and the perseverance and all of the guidance and instruct instruction and all of the opportunities that he did provide for me. During that time, the New York Mets of the 1980s, the late 80s especially, uh, was notorious for winning baseball games, but also partying, having fun, uh, doing the things that maybe quote unquote rock stars did to a certain degree. We lived a very charmed life. We were catered to. Uh, we had masses of fans following us all over the country. Uh, it was a time of uh, sheer joy and fun and excitement and uh, rarely was there a dull moment. I, like most of my teammates, enjoyed the party scene, enjoyed the time after the games, the different cities, the different nightclubs, uh, the different parties, uh, the access to the beautiful women, and all of the good things that go along with being a Major League Baseball player in New York City. We had fun, but in the end, I think we kind of lost perspective on priorities, myself included. The party, the drinking, the women, the good times more or less overtook the dedication, the hard work, the commitment, the focus, and the day-to-day -day determination to do what it took to win ball games, which was our job. We still won, but we did not win another World Series. And part of that was due to our lack of focus and the things that not all of our players did, but a, a number of us uh, enjoyed. My career from there went uh, to Los Angeles, to St. Louis, to Houston, to Cincinnati and bounced around for the next six, seven years of my career before finishing with the Chicago White Sox. During that time, my faith and my trust and my commitment to the Lord came and it went. It was hot and it was cool. It was off and then it was on. And uh, that is something that uh, looking back now, obviously you have some regrets, but uh, my life was my life and uh, I lived it, I enjoyed it, I did the best I could, but I did make mistakes like us all. And those mistakes uh, are a thing of the past now. Uh, I am grateful to have been saved. I am grateful to have been born again and received God's gift of salvation. And that is something that uh, is by far the greatest decision that I've ever made. I've had the opportunity to make many decisions in my life, none bigger, none more important, none better than the decision to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Following my playing career, I had the opportunity to manage in the minor leagues and spent two years managing in the Cincinnati Reds organization in Charleston, West Virginia. My first year was a was a, a tremendous opportunity for me. I enjoyed it immensely. The team that I had was very successful. And later on in the season, I found out that my wife, Marcia, was pregnant with my daughter, Danielle. So I went on to manage one more year 
but the team that I had was not nearly as good. The time that I had and the enjoyment of being away from my wife and my daughter was certainly something that bothered me immensely. And at the conclusion of that second year, I made a decision to forego a managing, coaching career in the minor leagues, or hopefully with the eye on being a major league coach or manager one day, so that I could be at home and be an everyday dad. And that's something I will never regret. During that time, we lived in Nashville, Tennessee, and my daughter grew up there, and uh, we're very proud of who she is and and where she is in her life and her walk with the Lord. But we chose to move home to Biloxi, Mississippi back in 2002. And obviously a few years after our arrival, Hurricane Katrina hit. And Hurricane Katrina devastated me, my family, my extended family, and thousands and thousands of other folks here in South Mississippi. It was an experience I wouldn't wish on anyone and an experience that really changed me uh, for the worse, I guess you might say. When I needed the Lord the most, I turned the other way. After Katrina, not only did I lose my house, my business, lots of my possessions, lots of my memorabilia from my career, and just so many other things. But thankfully, my wife, my daughter, my dad, my mom, and our little puppy all survived the storm. But it was quite a harrowing experience, to say the least. In the days and weeks and months after Katrina, my brother committed suicide uh, several months later. My mom and my dad were both in very poor health and part of the reason I moved home was to be here and be a caretaker for them and be there for them. And they subsequently, because of Katrina, uh, had to be placed in a nursing home, in an assisted living. During that time, I was the one steady and influenced, the one that cared for them, that was there numerous times each week to be there for my parents. And during that time, I began to use drugs and drink alcohol more than I've ever done so. I was trying to numb the pain, to ease the times that I was going through. That got worse and worse. My parents ended up passing away. One a year later, the other, my dad, the last two years later. My wife left me. My life was going downhill in a horrendous spiral. I got divorced and I was in a bad spot. And not too long after that, I met a wonderful lady, my wife today, Julie. After meeting her, my life became good again, relevant. I altered some of the ways that I was living, adjusted, but I did not conform. I did not change completely. After a while, I began to go back down that dark road again, that bad downward spiral. And sometime thereafter, I had gotten to the point where friends, family, and my live-in girlfriend had enough of me, and I had enough of myself. And I finally reached out to the Lord and asked Julie to help me. Got me enrolled into a Christian recovery program. During that time, I gave myself to the Lord. I accepted the gift of salvation on January 19, 2012. I have been transformed. My life is completely new. My heart is new. My mind is renewed. My spirit, thankfully, is focused on loving and serving the Lord. Julie and I later were married. 
during the time that I was away in the program, we wrote and communicated and shared our love for each other. By the grace of God, she stood by me and stood with me. And not too long after I completed the program, we were united in marriage. Three days after entering the Christian recovery program at the Home of Grace, I accepted the Lord as my Lord and Savior. And from that moment on, I was a changed man. The 90-day program that I experienced was an amazing time in my life. I wasn't sure I would be able to handle 90 days. I had no real expectation as to how and what was going to happen during this time, but I knew in my heart that I needed a change, that I was sick and tired of being sick and tired of being a drunkard, of being somebody that had lost all respect of himself and respect of others. And my life needed to change. And by God's grace, it did in an amazingly beautiful, wonderful way. I spent 90 days at the home and had many of wonderful spiritual guides that helped me through that time. The teachers, the preachers that came to speak, the chapel services, the devotion services, and the entire time that I was there, the classes, the teachers that came and shared. It was an amazing experience and something that I will cherish and treasure forever. Being introduced to the Bible in such a way and having the time to explore God's Word, to listen to others share God's Word, and to experience it myself and to grow as a human being, as a, per, as a child of God, was uh, an experience that I will long, long, long cherish and be proud and thankful that I was able to experience. The time that was spent there seemed like it was gonna be an eternity prior to going in. Went relatively quick and I encourage anyone that seeking help, that needs help, that is hurting, that needs some guidance, needs an awakening. The Home of Grace was an amazing place for me. And I know it has been for many, many, many others that have gone through the program. I would encourage anyone that is seeking the Lord and seeking a change and seeking freedom from addiction and from pain and suffering because of addiction to enter this program. It will change your life. My daughter Danielle is a beautiful young lady that I'm very proud of. As a young girl, she watched her dad struggle with alcohol. I don't know how much she knew or how much she remembers or how much she really understood but through the grace of God, she has turned into be a wonderful young lady who has a strong relationship with the Lord, who I am very proud of and very thankful that she has lived the life that she has. Her mother has been very good to her and has raised her in such a way. I miss some time with her, but never again, and she has enjoyed seeing the new daddy and the time that we have shared have been amazing. I am so proud and so thankful that she has made it through my most difficult times in glowing fashion. She is an amazing young woman with a future that is very bright and I am so thankful. In my new walk with the Lord, I am often asked well, how do you not drink? Or how do you handle being around those that do drink or those that do party and do some of the things that I did in my past? And it's pretty simple. I explained to them, I did not just quit drinking. I did not stop using drugs and alcohol. I have been transformed 
my life is totally a new life. I am a new being. The old man is dead. I am a new spirit. God has awakened me, has given me a new life. My desires are not the same. My heart, my emotions are not the same. My feelings towards things that were important to me are not the same. My focus is on the Lord, doing things the right way, His way, accepting His plan for my life instead of trying to do what Barry wants. And those things have made me a new person. And God has amazing powers, obviously. God has transformed me into this new person. And not only do I not drink, I do not ever wish to drink. It's not something that is a desire of mine anymore. And the things that have changed in my life are all for the better because of the Lord. And I would encourage anyone that is dealing with addictions, with problems, with drinking, with drugging, whatever the case may be, if you turn to the Lord and put your focus on Him and adhere to His way, your life can change as well.